Good afternoon. I would like to particularly thank the organising committee for inviting me here. I'm really happy and honoured to have the opportunity to speak before the audience here in relation to the new technologies for the authenticity and uh, fraud detection in food items. My presentation is going to start with uh, the authenticity, definition of authenticity. How do we define that? It's defined what, as something that we declare on the label of a uh, food item that we sell. So on the label, we can have some claims or data in relation to the origin of the product. Of course, uh, the uh, nutritional values. Classification in relation to the various characteristics. If, of course, we have uh, any additives or anything that we might need in terms of compliance with the legislation, but there are specific traits that have to do with uh, the origin, with uh, the variety, and with uh, some health claims. All these are business tools and pillars of uh, a new type of marketing that is used more and more by professionals in uh, the agri-food chain in order to promote their products. So since 2017 in March, there is uh, this prerequisite by the European Commission for this labelling of the authenticity, for this labelling to be controlled by laboratories. So as you understand, when we have products of origin, with the name of origin, uh, there, there are things uh, that have to do with logistics with statements and declarations filed by the producers. But we're moving on to a new era where this all will be uh, stated through laboratory testing. In this context, the European Commission set up a European Centre for the Authenticity of Food, developing methodology that will be presented by me afterwards so that we can move on to a new era of checking what is marked on the label. And of course that presupposes uh, fraud detection systems. And for this reason we have uh, developed, and since 2013, we've been developing methods to check and to document uh, this authenticity and they, these rely on um, a holistic approach an untargeted approach, approaches, as Mr. Skandamis said, we're trying to show the profile of uh, a product in the agri-food chain and the genomics as well. So we have uh, some genomics, PCR and DNA-based techniques, molecular techniques, or some other techniques that have to do with uh, the immunochemical characteristics or the isotopic techniques or the spectroscopic techniques could be NMR, MS, FTAR, FTAR, Raman and so on and so forth. Of all these, the most uh, rapidly developing one would be uh, the spectrometry because with this technique we can see uh, a lot of things, we can see the profile of a lot of traits and uh, it's a highly sensitive method so we can get a lot of information out of that and the information that we get, this is our research team dealing with all these techniques and the equipment that we use, which of course again requires financing and funding, and it's used both within the country and outside the country in partnerships. This is the infrastructure that we have. 
or our partners, the people we work with who use this type of technology. And this, of course, is used to identify new uh, characteristics in foods which are metabolites. These metabolites are biodrastic pro products as well, so they start with a production base like olive oil, honey, dairy products, feta cheese, fruit juice and so on and so forth. So this effort that uh, we're putting forth here aims not only to show the authenticity of a product and to detect fraud, but also to explain what happens in the Greek diet, a profile that can be used afterwards in some health claims or in various business plans to promote the sales of a product. So we're taking a look at all the chemical compounds, the metabolites, and this profile is linked with the origin, with the composition, and of course the composition is closely related to the detection of fraud, because if we don't see what we expect to find, then this implies some fraud. We have the target screening and the suspect screening. What do we mean by suspect screen? We do not have that in the laboratory, but there's a certain process we've set up and we can go look for them. This is a very important part of our process. It's uh, pioneering, so we start with the analysis. We have the analysis of the various compounds. We have identification when that is possible. When we have uh, the protocol, then it's easy. If not, we need to follow a different procedure and report to our clients uh, about what is happening. Then we have the ability for the data the big data produced to be uh, integrated in a model based on uh, the botanological composition, on the origin, on the variety, and so on and so forth. These models might be used for the detection of fraud and for the identification of authenticity. So we could say that a, a specific olive oil is from the uh, Koroneki variety from Kalamate and this olive oil is from Crete. So we can make all these uh, distinctions in depth. Then we've also developed some pioneering tools. I shall not go into further detail. What is important at this point is to say that what is uh, the utmost Im importance for the business world is that uh, we can and we will do that. We can uh, showcase the richness in certain types of foods and that was hidden in the past. To do that, we need to have the MS Ready suspect list. So the list of compounds that could not be identified in the past, but now this is possible. So the various identifiers, uh, the processing afterwards uh, that takes place and then we can have a list of all these um, compounds that could give added value to the products and the food that is sold in the agri-food chain. So here you have another scheme to show you what is happening. We have the authenticity of olive oil, of uh, the honey, dairy products and milk. Uh, the uh, yolk of the egg, the crocus, and uh, the deposits uh, in animal foods, and the fraud in the various fruit juices. For wine, we have analysed a series of um, products. We have found ingredients and compounds. It's not just one uh, ingredient. 
some of them are very valuable for our health. The same happens with saffron. There's a lot of fraud in saffron. We can identify where that comes from, which plant it comes from, based on the metabolic profile. So we can see whether something which is uh, sold at a high value is in fact what we get on the labeling. Because so what happens in practice is instead of using the high quality ingredient, they use traces from the stem of the saffron or other parts of the plant which are not so nutritious. In this case, we speak about a different situation that in due term can change the entire commercial and trade plan of, a, of an enterprise of a business. Honey, afterwards, there are many techniques that we can use in terms of the authenticity of honey. This is just one example with the biotrastic uh, profile, uh, but we have the ability to achieve the classification required to see whether this is honey that we get from flowers or whether it get, comes from pine trees or any other types of trees and claim, produce a claim afterwards. And again, this is uh, something that we're discussing, whether we can have claims of the kind to promote the sales of the Greek honey abroad. Then we have another case of fraud related to the fruit juice sector. Some or some of the types of fruit are more expensive, like pomegranates. So you mix that with uh, the uh, juice of uh, grapes or something else which is uh, of a lower cost. But again, there are metabolites, we can trace them even in very small quantities and then identify whether this is a genuine product or not that is sold in the market. And finally, we need to speak about the feta cheese and the dairy products. A lot of discussion around, around these, uh, around the origin, around the use of other types of milk other than the ones permitted. You understand that this is a huge uh, topic, financially speaking, because we're talking about uh, the sustainability of uh, producers and of our image abroad, because feta cheese is not something that we consume only in our country. It's, uh, uh, it's a product of origin that people consume all over the world. So in this case, we need to have a look at the protein profile and the profile of the lipid in order to identify and trace even very small uh, addition of another type of milk than the one uh, on the label. And of course we can uh, do the same thing in yogurt and milk. Olive oil, that's my favorite. Because I happen to come from uh, a family that uh, produces a lot of olive oil from the island of Lesbos, Mytilini. Many efforts have been made in the past to analyse and to study the uh, genome, uh, the profile, the metabolic profile, uh, the uh, vitamins and a lot of other ingredients that have made olive oil so famous. There's like a thousand things that we need to think about when we speak about the olive oil and the olive trees. But with these techniques, we've been... Uh, able to successfully say whether we're dealing with organic oil or not, whether the olives that have been used have been imported in the country from Chile or from Egypt or are actually from the area of Kalamata in Greece. Uh, the distinction and separation is something very easy to do afterwards and you can see the um, analytes. Uh, and of course, all of that can drastically change what we used to call a product of origin because the Calamon olive oil, uh, olives could be from either Kalamata or from other areas within the country. So this type of olive, is it actually something similar to the profile we get from the olives in Kalamata? So we need to think about that in a more commercial way to see whether we can use further areas because of the products that they produce are exactly the same. So all of that should be digitalized one way or another. And we try to make all this big data digital and have a web-based application 
something that we can get online or different types of applications. But the idea behind that is for this data to be made available in digital libraries and through the blockchain to accompany the product. So someone at the supermarket can scan the product and get a piece of information regarding to whether this is genuine authentic product or not, based on all the ingredients behind that. So it's not just logistics, it's not just the claims and the declarations filed with that. There should be digitalization, there should be traceability, but this profile should not only be there to, to explain whether we're dealing with fraud or with a genuine product, which is very important for the Greek economy, but this can also be used for the promotion of sales afterwards because we can back up all this system saying that this product can have all these beneficial actions afterwards. It could be used as a commercial tool, not just for testing, but for um, something that can promote, uh, can be used as a tool, can promote the sales of the product. And we've been talking about that with the ministry and with various other agencies so that so the businesses can make the most of it. Having said that, these are the digital libraries, web-based, as I said, we can easily compare products. Here at the bottom you can see what we've done for the rates of the olive tree and you can quickly compare between samples. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.